Well, welcome everyone to Eagle Dreams 20 Minute Tech Break. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Excited that you were able to tune in today. Um, today we are joined by Justin Guzzi and Justin DiMatteo to talk about disaster recovery and business continuity. So really the focus of today is how do you build IT resilience? What are things you should know? What are tools you can leverage? Um, I know these guys are the experts in that, so they're gonna go a little bit deeper into those topics. Um, Justin Guzzi is from the Eagle Dream team. Um, he's our senior cloud solutions architect and also an AWS ambassador. Um, and then this week, we actually have a guest from Cloud Endor. So welcome, Justin DiMatteo. Excited for your first tech break. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. We're excited. Alrighty. So if you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to throw them in the chat box and we'll make sure we get those answered. Um, at the end, the last five, 10 minutes, we're actually, we wanna open it up to you. So if you have a question, you can use the Ring Central function to raise your hand and we would love to call on you and you can ask our speakers directly any questions or any comments that you have. All right, well, Justin, Doozy, I'm gonna hand it off to you and let's get started. Sounds good, thanks, Courtney. Uh, hey, everybody, you've got Justin Guzzi here from Eagle Dream. Um, I'm happy to be joined with uh, Justin DeMatteo. Uh, Justin DeMatteo is a Cloud Endure AWS Disaster Recovery Specialist. So I'm in good company today. Um, and we're happy to, to, to uh, talk a little bit about DR, business continuity, and some of the core components uh, that go into that for planning. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the questions. I think about four questions that we're gonna go over and then we'll have some Q&A. So let's start with the first one. So number one, Cloud, uh, what characteristics does a solid IT recovery plan have? Uh, this is a really good question. So there's a few core components to having a solid IT recovery plan. Um, you know, it basically around DR and then how do you recover in the event of a disaster? So I'd say, you know, first and foremost, one of the most important things is to first identify your systems that are at risk. Um, you know, different types of systems that you are running or hosting will have different levels of business risk depending upon what they're doing. Um, so to determine what that is, you do something called the business impact analysis to determine basically, you know, if this system, particular system and scope goes down, uh, what's the impact to my business? What's the monetary loss? Um, you know, what, what's, what's affected as part of this? Um, and along with that, you'll probably be determining your RPO and RTO, so your recovery point objective and uh, recovery time objective. So uh, that kind of determines at what, you know, at what point can you restore back to, you know, potentially with data loss or, you know, how long can you, how long can you take to restore to get that system back up and running, um, you know, before it, it starts to cause uh, other losses to your company. So first and foremost, identify the systems. Um, and then after that, I would say, you know, a communication plan is really important part of a recovery plan. Um, so something like a communication tree or, you know, all of the people who would be involved uh, in a DR scenario, who you call, uh, contact information for each of those people. Um, and then that would be part of something we'd call a run book. Um, so a run book is something that details, you know, how do you back up systems? How do you restore systems? Um, you know, how do you restore in the event of a catastrophe? Um, and then, you know, a couple other pieces I'd say are scheduling testing of your recovery plan, you know, testing your DR processes and procedures, um, you know, doing that on some type of a scheduled cadence. Um, and then lastly, I would say, you know, another important piece to have is you have to have buy-in from stakeholders. Uh, all key stakeholders within the company, within your division, um, you know, everybody needs to have a voice around your recovery plan. What are your thoughts about that, Justin? Yeah, I, I think it's spot on, right? I think as um, a, as we work with customers to kind of build out what these plans look like, you know, I think I think the critical component that everybody faces is, you know, downtime is lost revenue, right? So identifying what's going to impact the business and where. And I think you, you hit a really good point of identifying responsibilities, right? Disaster recovery comes in, in so many different flavors that having that run book really built out and everybody understanding their roles and responsibilities when it does come to a disaster, 
impacts the business uh, on so many levels, right? The amount of time that we're down and we don't have a plan and we're not, you know, initiating a, a, our DR strategy, it's lost revenue. So making sure as you build that plan that there's, there's key roles and responsibilities throughout is critical. Um, and, and I think that having testing built in so that if there does come a time where you have a disaster, it's not a fire drill. Um, companies that we've, uh, you know, we've been working with for years here at AWS. Um, I think that this is becoming more and more of a, uh, of a organizational initiative to be able to run tests and say, Hey, if event A, B or C happens, this is how we, we prepare for that because, you know, that could impact as little as 30 minutes or five hours of a fire drill and that can be significant loss in revenue. So um, I think, I think great points on making sure that, that you have testing and you have a run book. Um, I think that those are, those are critical components to building out a strong DR strategy. Yeah, for sure. And, and to, to that point, I, I'd say your DR plan is only as, is, is only as good as your, your testing, right? So um, sure we can back up systems all day long and, you know, send off our, you know, our medium to wherever it has to go um, and send that data off somewhere. But if we're not testing our plans, I mean, you know, when the time comes that there actually is a disaster or something yeah. happens, and if we're not prepared, then, you know, the, that whole plan that we put together is, is pretty much useful at that point. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, specifically with, you know, with our customers, with cloud and door, um, you know, ha having the right solution in there is is critical. But if, if you don't test it and you don't have, again, roles and responsibilities, you know, the, the technology is there for you, but you need to have a plan in place to be able to utilize that effectively for the organization. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, so let's move on to the second question. Um, so is the cloud an acceptable component of a good disaster recovery technology? And why? Do you want to take that one, Justin? Yeah, sure. So, I, I, I mean, as unfortunate as it is right now, we're really seeing what the cloud can do for for our uh, for our customers when it comes to disaster recovery. Right. Um, I'll speak on, on behalf of AWS here in the sense that our number one initiative as an organization is is security. Right. And, and in that, there are so many different components, but of course, one of them being disaster recovery. So um, with companies, I mean, take the impact of COVID, for example, um, being able to leverage the cloud as a disaster recovery strategy is more critical than ever, right? Not being able to enter data centers, um, you know, there, there's a myriad of different reasons why, um, but the cloud in itself, both from uh, their flexibility components and security components provide, I mean, it, it's such a strong component of building out a DR strategy. Um, and, w and whether your journey as an organization is to, you know, leverage cloud as a primary or as a secondary, there's so many different ways to use the scalability and, and functionality of the cloud um, as a DR component. So, the, you know, that's a long-winded answer, but short-winded answer. I think it's uh, a very, very acceptable component of doing a disaster recovery plan. Um, and it's, it is really seeing, you know, the, the, the industry is really moving away from the traditional, you know, data center to data center, hot to hot type of disaster recovery for both cost, uh, performance, flexibility, there's a lot of components that go into a, a cloud first DR strategy um, and, and customers do really see that uh, when they start to use that. And again, that could be protecting your workloads within the cloud like cross region, or, you know, if you run a, you know, an on-prem or a data center, it's a, it's a great secondary uh, disaster recovery space uh, for you to use as, as part of that DR plan. Yeah, you, you hit on a couple interesting things there. So first of all, you said, you know, getting away from that data center mentality. And I think, you know, what's really the most compelling thing when I think about using the cloud for DR is that, um, you know, I can have a DR site pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, and I don't even have to spin up a data center to do that. 
right? I don't have to take the months and years to build my secondary location to fail over to. I can literally spin that up in minutes uh, yeah. in, in any part of the world, whether it's North America, Europe, Asia, right? Because AWS, you know, they've got regions all over the world that you can use as a, as a DR location. Um, and then the other thing too, you know, you were talking about, um, you know, whether you still have data centers and you want to leverage it, you know, whether you're in AWS today and your workloads are only in AWS or whether you're on-prem, um, I think there's a whole variety of tools at your disposal. You know, Cloud Endure yeah. obviously is, you know, one of the leading edge tools that are out there. Um, but, you know, there are other things out there. So if you, if you, you know, if you're running exclusively in AWS, they've got AWS backup service. Um, if you're using any of the platform services, there's built-in native backups with really, really low RPO and redundancies at the global infrastructure layer. But if you're still, you know, in a data center or you're operating in a hybrid mode of some sort, um, you can still use the cloud for really low cost storage. So there's a lot of, yeah. uh, there's a lot of tools out there that integrate directly into S3 um, for archival purposes and backup purposes. Um, you know, Cloud Endure is awesome because it orchestrates all of that sailing over for you. So, you know, I can be running a server in a data center, even if it's a physical machine, I could fail it over to AWS, it converts it, it does everything for me and I'm up and running just as I was on-prem, um, you know, and I can really have any type of configuration it could be a pilot light type of setup, a warm standby. So, you know, I, I think cloud is absolutely um, a, a great component of a DR. Yeah, and I, I think that yeah, Justin, that, that touches on the flexibility, right? That, that mm -hmm. flexibility of being able to, it's, it's not, you know, A or B. There's so many different ways that you can leverage the cloud to, to build out a strong DR strategy um, that, you know, it, 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 it's not a one size fits all for everybody. Yep, for sure. Cool. So let's move on to number three here. Um, how can businesses ensure their data backup plans are effective? Um, so yeah, this is a, another great question. And I, I kind of alluded to this earlier on the first question, um, but you know, I think first and foremost, you have to test, right? Yep. You have to have a testing schedule set up to test your recovery plan. Because again, you know, your backups are only gonna be as good as your testing strategy. Um, so whether that's test quarterly, you know, biannually, once a year, I'd say once a year at a minimum, you wanna test your uh, you know, test failing over, testing recovery. Um, and that's really, I think, where you start to uncover things like your risks. Um, you know, what what did we forget about? Or, you know, oh, we forgot this key piece of information for recovering the system. In addition to that, dependencies, right? So if you've got systems that depend on other systems, the only way I'm going to really know uh, if it's going to work in a, a failover scenario is if I test it out. Um, so you have to build those run books and run through that process and continuously iterate on that process. Um, and not to mention, you know, tools and technologies are always evolving. Um, so there's always, you know, new, newer, better tools out there for, for uh, backing up, for testing. Again, Cloud Endure, always evolving tool. It's a, you know, it's a SaaS offering. So, you know, I don't have to worry about going and updating that, that software. You know, Cloud Endure does that automatically for me. What do you what do you think about that, Justin? Yeah, I, th I think you're I think you're absolutely right. I think this does go back to the first piece, and and I will say, and, and this certainly is not a uh, a blanket statement, but just in speaking with people in the industry, I think honestly testing is a little bit of a uh, a scare to some people because it does pull in a lot of components of your business, um, but there are ways to do light testing. Right to do bubble testing, you know, cloud indoor specifically. Um, you can do very easy testing in the console and then clean up those resources. But specifically, I think that there is there needs to be a very um, scheduled. I guess is the right right word for it. Scheduled plan to test your DR. Now, of course, there are companies that do weekly testing. There's companies that do annual testing, whatever the case may be from the organization, whatever you feel is appropriate to mitigate risks, I think that, that you need to stick to that plan. Um, so I, I, I do think the biggest piece is, is having, uh, having a test in place. And, and you're right. I mean, there are so many different technologies. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's probably pretty hard to keep up with. Um, 
but there there are resources in <clears throat> both online and internal at AWS that you can you know blogs and stuff like that because things are always changing right and it's not going to be a one fit all solution for example right like cloud indoor provides enterprise DR to people but there's also other pieces to that component like uh, you know, what are you doing with your backups? And we can work side by side. And, and often that's a best practice. You're not going to put all your eggs in one basket. And frankly, you shouldn't. Um, so I, I think really tying everything together within the organization to make sure components A, B, and C all work together and all talk together um, is, is part of that plan, right? So I, I think combining your resources internally and then testing uh, are two ways to really make sure that that your DR and backup plans are effective. Yeah, and making sure everybody's on the same page because the last thing you want is to try to execute, you know, a recovery strategy and everyone's kind of like, well, I thought that was their responsibility or, yeah. oh, I didn't know that, that I was supposed to take care of that. Yeah, that's recipe for a disaster. Yes. Cool. And Justin, if you don't mind me popping in here, we actually had a question from Paul. Sure around that of mm -hmm. who should be a part of the disaster recovery plan in terms of employees and leadership. Um, so I think that ties in really well with what you were just saying, if, you, if there's anything you wanna add there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, can, I can start with that one. Um, so I think, you know, it, again, you're, when you're doing a business impact analysis, you're really, you're saying, okay, my IT systems, if they go down, what's the impact to the business? Um, and typically when you're trying to, and, you know, decide what's the business impact, you're going to involve the business stakeholders. So it can range all the way up to C-level, right? So maybe the yep. CEO, CIO, CTO, um, just to help you determine that. If, they, if you've got a business unit, business analysis, that can help, you know, try to figure out, okay, what's the monetary loss in the event that a system goes down? Um, so you'll have, I think you'll have uh, people at, at that level, C-level, um, you know, product owners, depending on the systems that you're protecting and, and testing, um, you know, you need the product owners of that system, those that are the fam most familiar with it, to really tell you, okay, these are the things that we need to consider. Uh, these are the components that, you know, we need to take into account when we do a, a failover or if we have a disaster, because uh, they own the product, they know it the best, right? So definitely the product owners, um, and then the people that are, are orchestrating the failover, right? And people that are backing the systems up, uh, the people that will be testing and restoring the systems, they need to be on the same page. Um, so I would say that you know the key people uh, of the of the plans, you know, it really spans the whole company. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll say that the communication within the organization is critical, right? Because you're absolutely right. I mean, disaster recovery touches everybody's desk from the CEO who's going to be in the news if there's not a good disaster recovery plan and something happens um, down to the application owners to, you know, IT managers. Um, it, it, it's a great question. It's a, uh, it's a tough one to, to have a uniform response from because there's so many people within the organization. I would say though that the communication from both hands-on employees to leadership is critical when building a DR strategy. Awesome. If you don't mind, I want to get to these two other questions too from the audience before we run out of time. Um, this is a good one from Peter. If I'm already running my applications in the cloud, what should I focus on in terms of DR? So focus on in terms of DR. Um, so if you're already running in the cloud, um, there are is some inherent uh, security features built in. I think things that you want to focus on, and, and I'll take this from a cloud and door slash AWS perspective, is having resiliency built off, built around those applications where you have the ability if, and the cloud is very, very secure, but, uh, you know, if let's say, um, let's say a region goes down, let's say you're running in, uh, in the East region, what's the, what's the plan the organization has to get those workloads running up in another region? Um, what does that communication look like between those applications? Um, I, I would say those are the type of things from a cloud and door perspective and AWS perspective that we focus on when building a DR strategy. Um, Justin, do you have anything in addition? 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, going along with what, what you said, Justin, is that um, it's going to depend on what, what you're using. Uh, if you're already in the cloud today, um, you know, again, like I mentioned before, if you're using some of the platform services out there, like RDS, for example, that has native uh, snapshot capabilities built in um, and the ability to restore, you know, within the last five minutes with a point in time restore, you know, you, you've kind of, that, that's kind of already built into it. Granted, you do have to tweak it, configure it, but there's not much of a heavy lift to set that up. Um, if you got, if you're running things on EC2, you know, Cloud Endure again, great tool to have. Um, in addition to, there's other ways to back up disks on instances. So um, I think it really comes down to what's the core data you're trying to protect, right? If, like Justin said, if you build in that resiliency, um, you know, and you've got immutable, immutable infrastructure, like even at your web tier, you know, there's not much to back up on a web tier if, if a web server goes down and a new one launches in its place, right? Um, it's we really care more about that persistent data at the database level. So where does that live? And then, you know, what tools are available to be able to back that up? Um, and, and typically in AWS, you know, all of those questions are answered in terms of how do you back it up? There's, there's typically a service for that. Yeah. Great. Peter, let us know if that helps answer your question. And then another question we have from Ray, how often do you change DR plans? Um, would, is this something you would do on a monthly level, quarterly level? If you guys could expand a little bit more there. So first of all, Ray, I like, I like the way you posed the question. Hi, Justin team. Um, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I think, so it's a very, very interesting question. I think you want to really build a DR strategy in with long-term in mind, right? Like it's a lot of investment within the organization. I'm not just talking financially, I'm talking resource wise to build a strong DR strategy. So the investment there should be built around the idea that this is the plan. This is how we run for, you know, let's say a year or two or three. Um, that being said, you know, the landscape of technologies and cloud platform, it's ever changing. So I think as an organization, you want to maybe reinvestigate, you know, six months, a year. And, and I'm not saying change the technology, but make sure that what we have in place, what we built six months ago, what we built a year ago is still relevant, right? We're not, there's not something that we could change to make even better. Um, so it's kind of a vague answer, but hopefully that was somewhat helpful. Uh, Guzzi, do you have anything in addition to that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, you know, you, you hit it right on. Um, and I think it's going to depend um, how, how big of an organization you are, how many sure. systems are in scope, right? Because like Justin said, it, it is a significant uh, human investment. Uh, there's a lot of overhead to testing and ensuring that your plans are always running at their finest. Um, and I think it, like I said, it's an iterative process. So as you test, you know, you may make some small changes to your plans, you know, systems will come in scope, systems may no longer exist. So you'll, you'll tweak your run books, you know, you'll, you'll make notes on and revisions to your run books. Um, so I don't think there's a, there's one specific answer to say, you know, you should change your plan this frequently or you should yeah. or shouldn't do it. I think it's just really going to depend on, you know, how often your environment is changing. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And we know we have about five minutes left. Did we have um, any questions left? Or does anyone else in the audience? I'd love to get if the audience has any other questions. Looks like there's one more, Courtney. Oh, I see From it. Paul. Thanks, yeah. Paul. So I'm just going to try to summarize here. Um, I imagine it can be somewhat tricky to convince certain customers to spend more for something that they think are backups. How do you help the customer understand the value in disaster recovery? Yeah, so uh, I'll feel that one. Um, DR and backup are often a very nice marriage together. Um, as a best practice, to be honest with you, we, we, recommend um, that companies also have a backup plan alongside of a DR plan. Where a DR plan really comes into play is when downtime is not an option, right? Um, backup is a great tool if you need to recover and you can 
you know, withstand RTO and RPOs of 24, 48 hours, your DR plan is more around the critical business applications, right? Um, and it doesn't always have to be, you know, tier one application, stuff like that. But um, when you think of the organization as a whole, what workloads, what applications, what servers, if they were to go down, would have significant impact on the organization, both from a revenue perspective, a customer perspective. Um, that's really where a DR strategy comes into play. A backup comes into play when downtime is affordable and, and you can spin those instances up over you know, course of a day or two. That, that would be my comparison. Yeah, I, you know, and the thing I think is, is probably tricky is without seeing the numbers, sometimes uh, an organization, you know, or uh, you know, certain stakeholders might have a hard time saying, okay, uh, you know, that's a lot of insurance to invest in, you know, why would I do that? Uh, you know, we yeah. just recover the systems. But the truth is, again, it comes back to that business impact analysis. You can, you can get a rough idea, you know, and, and quantify what, what the what that impact to the business is for, from a monetary standpoint, especially you know like for, from the perspective of a of a business that operates exclusively online, right? Um, you know if your online web portal goes down, how many sales are you losing uh, every minute, every hour, yeah. you know every day that the system is down? And and you you can kind of figure out the formula. Um, and I think that's a really um, compelling metric to to help you know customers or or businesses understand that. You know, there, there is an impact no matter how you look, especially in today's digital age. Agreed. Awesome. Good question. And we have two, we only have two minutes left. Um, any other questions from our audience? Justin, Guzzi, Di Matteo, anything else you guys want to add? Nothing on my end. Uh, I really appreciate the uh, the engagement here. It's always always nice to hear what questions uh, people are thinking about within their organizations. Um, so, thank you very much. Very 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 helpful for me. Yeah, great questions too. Thanks everybody for attending yeah. today. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. We're gonna wrap things up. Um, get back to the rest of the day. Hope you enjoy the weather wherever you are. And we're going to be back on May 29th for the next tech break. I know Memorial Day is coming up, so wanted to give everyone a chance to celebrate the holiday. Um, next topic on May 29th, we're going to be joined by PGA of America um, to talk about DevOps and how to innovate and scale your business faster. So that should be a great topic, good one. And we will send you all the info. Thank you so much for joining us.